Hello there, and welcome to our podcast, Beyond Distribution with GTDC. Today's guest is Clive Fitzharris, who is the CEO of DCC Technology. Clive has been part of DCC for 14 years and is a member of the GTDC's board of directors. In this discussion with Frank Vitagliano, Clive talks about the importance of focusing on the customer and the value distributors provide in anticipating what their needs will be in this very fast paced tech environment. Clive also shares his thoughts on what value added programs and services are gaining traction and the impact of Brexit on the tech community. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Frank Vitagliano, and this is our next episode of Beyond Distribution. Um, I'm delighted today to have with me Clive Fataris, the CEO of uh, DCC Technology. Clive, welcome. It's good to have you. It's great to be here, Frank. Yeah. We're, uh, we're here at our um, event in um, our MIA GTDC Summit in uh, uh, beautiful Amsterdam. And uh, we, um, we had a great session this morning. And then Clive agreed to spend some time and talk about what he's doing and get to know uh, him a little bit and DCC technology. So tell a little bit about yourself, Clive, how you got into the industry, what you do, your current role, uh, so we can learn a little bit about, uh, about your company and you. Yeah, um, no problem. So I, uh, maybe a non-traditional route for a lot of the, uh, the tech uh, executives that are here today. I started off in uh, banking and finance and private equity, M&A advice. Uh, I joined DCC PLC, which is the parent company of DCC Technology yep. 14 years ago. Uh, DCC is uh, sales and marketing and distribution business across three industry sectors, technology being one, energy, healthcare. I worked within the energy business for eight years, uh, building the business in Europe and into the US and Asia. Uh, did uh, a role for a number of years then as head of group strategy and head of M&A for the group. Uh, I sat on the healthcare and technology boards as part of that. And then three years ago, I joined uh, DCC Technology, or what most people may know as Exertus, um, and have been um, in the division since then, uh, managing our businesses in Europe, continental Europe and the US. And uh, then last September became chief executive of the division. Terrific. Um, so that's interesting because, you know, actually, you know, you'd be surprised, but if you go around and talk to a lot of the executives in the distribution space, it's amazing how many came from a finance background, right? They might've been a CFO, you know, in technology or in other areas. And it's really important in the world of distribution because you know you measure thing in things in basis points a lot but um, from your experience how does that background work for you now for example in your present role yeah well, well i think the finance uh, financial acumen i probably take for granted and, and our energy business uh, was very much uh, a business of pence and cents as well so it was very much a daily business uh, manage your margins very well, your operating costs, uh, manage your working capital. So the same principles apply in uh, the technology distribution space. And then a little bit more on the financial element, uh, the, uh, the cash generation. We want to be adding value for our vendors and our customers, generating sufficient cash so we can reinvest in the business for organic growth, but also for M&A growth. Um, and I suppose then if I was a bit more agnostic about it um, uh, in terms of industry and, and even in my banking days I worked across uh, various different industries. I think what it taught me is to listen first, mm. uh, listen attentively mm. um, and then pick the questions that you're going to ask and pick the right ones at the right time. If you ask the wrong one too early you change the subject and uh, you don't necessarily uh, get to where you want to get to. And the other area that I'd say is a sort of a, a guiding principle for me is because um, I'm not a technologist and we have um, nearly 5,000 uh, tremendous employees in Exertus uh, that, uh, that know the technology and know the vendors and the customers. Um, so I spend a lot of my time on uh, understanding the strategy, trying to distill the complexity that's in the world around us, a fast moving world, and then to simply summarize 
where we're playing, how we're going to win in that area, what are our priorities mm. to execute, and then come on to the people aspect of it. And we're a very decentralized organization across all of our businesses and, and uh, also within technology. And we want autonomous entrepreneurial management teams. So we want them to feel ownership of the strategy and the execution and feel yep. empowered. So uh, um, I think the skills that I've learned uh, throughout my career are very transferable into the technology space. And every industry is moving fast. Yeah, I know yeah. we feel in technology distribution that uh, it's extremely fast moving and, and challenging. But uh, let me tell you, it's, it's happening. There's, there's no easy totally. job there. It's, it's the same challenges, uh, just a different industry. And, um, uh, and really, as leaders, we, uh, we, have to, we have to trust our people. We have to let them articulate and understand what's going on in their market. Uh, and give them the uh, the guide rails and uh, and the priorities to execute against. Yeah, totally. So, a little bit about Exertus. So, in terms of the technology business, you know, what locations do you know do you all play? And obviously, your major players here in Europe. Mm -hmm. I know you had an acquisition not long ago in you know North America. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with one of the GTDC members. So, tell us, talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> go to numbers first. So scale wise, mm -hmm. uh, a little under 5,000 employees across 15 countries. Wow. Um, in uh, Euro terms, about six, a little over 6 billion uh, euros mm -hmm. in turnover. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in um, uh, what we describe as uh, pillars, three pillar areas, um, abbreviated to, as mm -hmm. I said, simplicity, but mm -hmm. uh, pro-tech, infotech, and life tech. Yep. Um, and uh, we're organized and thinking about our business in those terms, working from the customer back. So ProTech is into installers, um, uh, B2B integrators. It's pro technology, so it's AV, mm -hmm. it's pro audio, uh, custom um, uh, enterprise, and then a number of other specialist areas in broadcast, CCTV, uh, and other aspects like that. Then the Infotech is um, uh, the more traditional uh, broadline distribution activities yep. Yep. in uh, IT, consumer electronics uh, products. And our life tech then is lifestyle products, um, which are it's uh, technical aspects of musical instruments, it's uh, uh, prosumer audio, it's hmm. um, uh, appliances, uh, smart home technology, um, uh, and they each of those have uh, there's there's a lot of commonality in terms of the hygiene factors and being a good distributor, but they have unique capabilities uh, within them. You know, the ProTech is more solutions orientated and uh, uh, very technical um, uh, employee base within it. Um, the uh, uh, the Life Tech is much more exclusive relationships with distributors, so we're doing a lot more in the markets in relation to marketing. Uh, marketplace enablement um, uh, and marketplace services also would have uh, leading brands, but a, a known brand offering to put alongside that just to broaden uh, broaden the range. Hmm. You know, one of the things that um, I talk a lot about when when I talk about distribution, and I've actually experienced it having been you know in the space for forty years, is the evolution that distribution has made over the years. And you know, you've come in fairly recently, so you don't perhaps go back to the days of when people just viewed distribution as pick back and ship, for example, or I use the term a bank and a warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. it's, but it's so much more than that, obviously. But as you look at it, um, it in, in the discussions I have with people, it's clear that, oh yeah, the core fundamental you know, capability still exists, the pick back and ship, but that's all just a given. It's really the incremental services and the incremental support so and clearly you guys in the spaces you operate provide a lot of those and continue mm -hmm. to because technology forces a lot of that. What are you seeing in that space as we go forward in terms of you know, what services, what support capabilities are your customers asking you to continue to provide and, and we're, we're, you know, where are you heading in that yeah, direction? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's, a, that's a very good question. And, um, uh, and I talked about how we, we are looking at our business starting from the customers back. And, yep. and what we're encouraging is we're, we're very much uh, vendor focused, but we're focused on the customer. What's 
the unmet need of the customer because yeah. if you understand what the customer's problem Absolutely. is you can bring them uh, the solution and uh, and that's uh, very much the case in uh, particularly the the pace of change in relation to all technologies we view it as it's no longer a single product cell it's it's an ecosystem of solutions so how do those technologies talk to each other can you educate your customer in relation to that so that they can make more informed decisions can you help them if they're uh, on uh, an installation perspective or uh, support as they're going through that or first line support uh, post uh, installation and and then in the more traditional retailer and e-tailer channels um, the digital services that we're providing and the marketing support uh, to create the demand in those markets and the digital services that go alongside uh, the the more physical products um, if it's if it's a gaming console and uh, uh, our business storm um, delivering uh, games digitally to those customers and subscription models to go along that and um, and continuing to innovate the offer to meet those customer needs and to try and anticipate them ahead of the the problem so that we're not just I suppose that there and and maybe some people look at distribution as uh, it's uh, it's a necessarily necessary evil within the value chain but actually it is uh, enabling the market and it's totally. it's providing solutions um, at I think a more effective cost and uh, from an environmental perspective uh, uh, much better um, you know it reduces costs it reduces uh, carbon footprint yep. it's a it's a very valuable service and it gets in a fast innovating world we have the ability through the people that we have and the relationships that we have of just getting our vendors products to market much quicker and into the hands of a happier customer yeah no question i think you know it, and it's kind of ebbed and flowed honestly over the years right because there's been lots of discussions over the years of you know distributors running the risk of being disintermediated by either technology enhancements or things that happen in the market and it obviously hasn't happened and and if anything the pandemic taught us over the last couple of years in my opinion was the value of distribution because what we all of a sudden realized was when the supply chain for almost the rest of the world in a bunch of different areas just almost stopped in some cases it did stop the IT supply chain flowed the entire time mm -hmm. right yeah. Now we had some we had some you know shortages kind of later on, but they weren't certainly caused by distribution. They really were you know vendor more vendor related issues in terms of product. But the IT supply chain flowed during the entire pandemic, and distribution is getting a ton of well deserved credit for that and for what you know the distributors have been able to do. And so I don't think there's any question that that's very well recognized um, as sort of a core function. But then you add to it all the things that you mentioned, which in fact make it more important in terms of delivering a solution or solving a problem versus just getting a product to market, mm. right? And your mm. teams do a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 That's great. You mentioned, yeah, um, you, mentioned um, you know, the environment and ESG and the whole issue of sustainability are really important factors, particularly here in Europe. Right, because the EU is certainly leading the charge in terms of, you know, impending reg regulations, things that are going to be put in place, and I know your team is very involved. You know, we have a project going on within GTDC, and members of your team have been in it like from the beginning with us, working so that the, if nothing else, we can um, collaborate as distributors, as a distributor organization, with each other, with the vendors with the regulatory agencies to understand what needs to be done and how can we can be more you know, impactful and effective. Talk a little bit about how mm. you think about the ESG initiatives and certainly the sustainability in general yeah, yeah. in particular. Um, well, maybe the first thing to talk about is uh, the technology industry and technology. Um, yeah. Like progressive technology makes the world better. Yeah. Um, there's many crises and things to solve and in terms of climate change and energy crisis and technology provides solutions there. It makes wellness and health uh, better. It makes our lifestyles uh, better and more comfortable. It provides greater accessibility. There's so many benefits uh, that technology can bring. And as an industry, uh, we're all enabling progress. 
Um, so uh, we're coming from a very positive place, sure. uh, I would say. So that's uh, the first thing I'd say. Um, and then in relation to, and we've seen, I've seen this in, uh, particularly in the energy uh, business um, and uh, maybe a little bit ahead of, uh, of technology. Um, like I wouldn't be concerned about the legislation coming and what's happening in Europe is for the betterment of European society, which is betterment for global society. So Boom. it'll happen in, in yep. other markets as well. So we have an advantage, I think, uh, being in Europe, uh, seeing that first and, and addressing with it and partnering uh, with our vendors. I suppose the thing that's most important at the start is um, gathering the information. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone that's listening to this will have been looking at their own operations from a scope one and a scope two perspective and making sure that the carbon content of right. the energy that's going into their operations uh, is substantially reduced and there's a plan to, uh, to re reduce that further. And then for our customers that are ultimately taking the products and services, they want to see the carbon content yep. and the environmental characteristics of yep. the products that they're buying. And th that's, that's not an insignificant task to provide that and to provide it in a way that's digestible and understandable so that they can make informed choices and that our vendors can differentiate themselves in uh, relation to the help that they're providing. So I think um, the work that, uh, uh, that you're doing and uh, that I think the technology distribution industry can do, I think it's an important uh, fulcrum, if you like, in aggregating that information and disseminating it in a very digestible way so that customers can make informed choices. So not easy to do, but a very important uh, first step to yeah. do as an industry. Yeah, totally. And, and I think that um, it, it's going to get driven at the customer level, there's no question, right? Mm -hmm. And so, when you know, when you look at the the traditional IT supply chain, you know, we all tend to think about it. Well, it starts with you know the vendor product, and you know, it gets the distribution, and it gets to a solution provider, and then ultimately it gets to an end user. Well, the demands start in the reverse when you think about it, right? It's it's it, we all wouldn't be doing what we're doing if it wasn't for the end user and the end user requirements. So what's happening, I'm starting to see it happen, is in the end user um, uh, opportunities, whether it's an RFP or a bid, or the information is now being asked for mm -hmm. you know, relative to what is the carbon footprint and have you guys thought about it. And the good news is I'm really proud of the work that our distributors within GTDC have been doing because it's very clear to me, it wasn't a year ago, but in the last year it's become very clear that all of you are extraordinarily engaged in this, and it isn't just lip service, right? Mm. Which, you know, in a lot of cases, it could be, oh yeah, we're doing this, we're doing... it's not just lip service. It's, it's legitimate stuff that's being done, uh, you know, and you have teams of people in your ESG yep, organization, yep. and that's important because it, it, it's gonna become increasingly important. And your point is well taken. It's not necessarily about the regulations, the regulations are part of what what we'll, we'll start to see, but it's really about what's the impact that we could make going mm. forward, you know, yeah, yeah, years yeah. down the road. Right? Yeah. yeah. The um, the other aspect that I'd add to it is, uh, and I think um, uh, I, I listened to a futurist uh, talking about uh, the death of the firm and the rise of the ecosystem, and we're talking we're in an ecosystem event totally. here today. Um, I was talking about it on the product and solution side, but just the industry participants uh, side and um, circularity and you know as a service is mm -hmm. part of that. Uh, but that's the next really big thing that we need to uh, to address. Um, providing uh, better information, I talked about that, and uh, so that our customers um, can make informed choice. Um, but uh, circularity and uh, extending the life of products and, and re-engineering it and. Um, you know, it's not something that our vendors can take on. Uh, areas of it we can take on as distributors, but we need to partner with our vendors. Uh, yeah. We need to partner within the industry. We need to partner with um, asset disposal experts yeah. and other various partners to, uh, uh, to bring those models forward because that's important for the ESG perspective and it's also a differentiator and it, it adds into the as a service type models like financing is is a base element of it and maintenance and other types of uh, um, uh, monthly subscription uh, payment items, but the end of life uh, aspect of it. And I think as technology uh, gets 
um, smarter as manufacturing techniques become more modular and you can uh, repair and replace and extend the life of, uh, of products. Uh, that's an important capability for us as distributors and, and for the ecosystem of the technology supply chain to, totally. uh, to effectively address. Well, absolutely. In fact, you know, you mentioned the ecosystem. It, at some point, the, the, the term is going to become overused in the industry, right? We could, you, we could see it starting to happen, um, but I talk about it all the time, and, and I talk about it from the standpoint of the, within the ecosystem, and it's massive, it, it requires orchestration within the system. And, you know, the term distributor doesn't give you credit for really what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Because you do way more than just distribute product. And I've come to start thinking about what you guys do as an ecosystem orchestrator, right? You're orchestrating a lot of the pieces of it. And if you look at it, who better serve to do that than distributors? Because you're right in the middle of all of it. So everything that you just mentioned, you guys are right in the middle of it and have relationships with everybody in that ecosystem to be able to kind of orchestrate what needs to be done. And I see that increasingly happening and increasingly important, uh, you know, going forward. If you look and say, you know, what's the role of distribution three to five years from now, you, know, you can't look any further than that because God only knows with technology and everything. But three to five years, what do you see? I see distributors becoming increasingly important as ecosystem orchestrators, mm, which is a yeah, big deal, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So mm. um, let me change gears for a minute and ask you a little bit about Brexit because Brexit was obviously, you know, was a major topic, you know, I don't know, I guess 18 months ago or so. And, you know, now it's been in place for a while. You're living it. Um, those of us that aren't, you know, living in Europe and certainly in, you know, the UK, et cetera, don't really, you know, don't really get a sense for, but what's since, since it's happened, what are you, what's your view? Positive, negative, what, you know, has it been, how's it worked for you guys? Yeah, I, I think if you asked me a few years ago, I'd probably have a more negative view. I th yeah. think relatively benign uh, view. Um, I think the, uh, the challenges uh, have been largely addressed from an industry perspective and we talk about uh, the resilience and the adaptability of distribution um, you know and it was it was a difficult adjustment and there was plenty of extra paperwork and elongating the supply chain and working capital issues uh, that came along with that and, and lack of flexibility when product came into the UK well then you weren't taking it back out of the right. UK because right. it was such a job to get it in in the first place but um, <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm satisfied that we've addressed uh, that. Um, it has added a little bit of cost to our um, to our operations, but I think we've uh, we've addressed it satisfactorily. I suppose the benefits of Brexit are just they're unproven. They're hard uh, to see. The um, you know and the, the economic challenges that the UK has had, and it's not entirely Brexit related, but right. there's a fair element uh, of it. Uh, that is Brexit related. I think we're probably lucky. The perspective that we have is uh, within Exertus is uh, is European. Um, uh, I can't say that we have gotten particular advantage in our European businesses uh, either, but um, uh, at least they haven't had uh, the Brexit related headwinds. And uh, and then we've substantial operations in North America, and our North American uh, businesses have uh, on a different, um, slightly different uh, macroeconomic. Uh, uh, cycle than Europe, maybe a little bit behind it, have uh, have had exceptionally strong performance and um, a very pro business uh, uh, environment in North America. So, um, you know, Brexit is it's a fact of life. We've moved on. We've dealt with it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not the biggest uh, thing that we we don't even talk about it anymore. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting. And that was one of the reasons I asked the question because I just hadn't been hearing much about it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like for a while it was such a hot topic, and it was you know. There was a lot of thought about what the impacts were going to be, and then all of a sudden it's just kind of become, okay, it's there, and <laughs> we're moving on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting. I'm, I'm glad you you glad you you explained that. Um, well, good. So you know, and, and this has been great. This has been very informative, very helpful. Um, last question in terms of, you know, how you see the business moving forward. Right, you, we're seeing a ton of technology changes. I mean, every day it's, it's something else, and, you know, with the introduction of 
you know, AI and what's happening there. And, and you know, obviously, you know, cybersecurity and the requirements associated with that is never going to go away. All right, those are going to stay critical. And all of the machinations associated with working with the cloud have become. But what do you kind of see as you're steering this, this, this ship over the next three to five years? What are your thoughts in terms of sort of the continued evolution of distribution and mm. where it's going and, and how, you know, you're going to, you're, you're thinking of guiding it in terms of, mm. you know, uh, your company? Yeah, and, and just particularly from our perspective, uh, our focus is on uh, specialization in a value added distribution yep. um, and we want to be the leader in our chosen markets and there's many of them and I talked about them a little bit earlier across the the pro uh, info and life tech platforms uh, that we have um, but those specialisms they require deep domain knowledge yep. technical understanding uh, strong relationships an orientation very much uh, towards creating the customer demand yep. uh, and uh, and generating the demand rather than fulfilling it. Yep. And that's what we're investing behind. And uh, when I talked about um, marketplace services and marketplace enablement and, uh, you know, direct consumer type activities are, uh, are a part of that. So uh, my firm view is distribution will hold and hopefully grow its market position. And we're evolving as an organization just to, to focus down, to really double down on what those specialist areas are and have a point of difference in those markets. Uh, a unique set of individually, maybe not uh, unique capabilities, but put together they're a unique set of capabilities so that we're, we're adding value for our customers and we're adding value for our vendors and uh, doing that through, uh, through great people. Yeah, I tell you what, and that's exactly, that is spot on because, you know, having spent years on the vendor side, you know, I can tell you that, you know, one of the things that the vendors would talk about in a negative way is the idea that, you know, distribution might just be fulfillment. And it isn't. And we all know it isn't. We know it isn't because you've got tons of, you know, hundreds, thousands of salespeople running around generating demand, but it doesn't get visualized a lot. People don't really understand it, but the point that you're on about actually creating demand um, is a really important point and will continue to evolve, uh, particularly in this world where people aren't quite sure how the platforms are going to work, mm. whose marketplace somebody's going to buy from. There's a lot of that confusion, but it, I think your strategy is spot on in mm. terms of if that value can be generated there'll be every vendor on the planet will be looking to work with you guys to mm. help them, you know, get mm. to market. And it's not just help me get to market and fulfill what I've created, but help me get to market and help me build, build some, yeah, yeah. some no, you know, no, sales exactly. You know, and, and there's, there's uh, standardized and maybe more commoditized uh, product areas and they're still very important. They're more totally. plug and play, they're, yep. uh, they're important, but uh, uh, for us, it's it's very much uh, what's the extra value that we're adding yep. in terms of knowledge or uh, services that we're providing to create that market uh, to market with a capital M, yep. as I say, rather than with uh, with a small N M and uh, and generate the uh, the demand. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's great. Well, look, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are clearly on the right track. You know. Um, and I think you're doing all the right things and we look forward to continue working with you. So thank no, you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you very it. much.